We're here in Haarlem at Singularity Netherlands, and I'm talking here with David Roberts. He's from uh, exponentialleadership.nl. He gave just a keynote. Let's see if we can um, if we can get uh, a uh, summary. David, you talked this morning about disruption, okay? And and of course, we've heard Singularity for a while now, and it's all very disruptive. How many talks have you given about this subject by now? Uh, Hundreds. You know, it's a hard question because I, I talk about disruption, about exponential technology, about global impact, uh, different things. Um, but I've certainly given at least 100 talks about something. <laughs> so I'm about uh, 300 people in the audience. So you've reached uh, 30,000 people by now. How fast do you think are people taking this message about disruption and uh, about exponential technology? How, how fast are they taking it in? So I think people hear it but it's very different to hear it versus internalize it and believe it and act on it uh, and that is always uh, you know as a speaker you can say it well let's let's wrap let's um, just do a little summary what industries do you think and what technologies are going to be exponential and are going to be disruptive i don't think there are any industries that won't be disrupted in the next 25 years and most of them will be disrupted in 20 and what technologies do you uh, watch yourself? Because I mean, it goes from biology to uh, to IT to uh, yeah. to everything. What 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 technology do you watch yourself? Um, probably me, artificial intelligence and digital biology, and mostly digital biology. And I think the digital biology the digital biology industry will at some point dwarf the computing industry. It'll be that. So computing is just a tool to basically change the biology. You say that in, in, in 15 years we will uh, read and write DNA more than we do email? Yeah, I think that, well, you know, it's different, not each of us individually, but yes, um, reading and printing DNA uh, will, the cost of that will eventually go to almost nothing. And we will be using that in just extraordinary ways that are almost unimaginable today. How old will your four-year-old be, you think, because of this technology? I think, uh, you know, a four-year-old today would, um, would live an extremely long time. And when I say extremely, I don't mean 100 years. I mean a lot older than that. Yeah. You think that it could be 200, 300, 1,000? It could be much more. Yeah, but I think that those aren't the kinds of things that we should focus on when we think about, you know, the benefits of humanity that come from, you know, the technology. It's it's not about sort of transhumanism and things. I mean, it really is about how do we make sure, one, that we accelerate the world and our humanity with it, and two, how do we make sure that we don't leave a lot of people behind? Because yeah. that creates a very unstable world and it's not even the right thing. I mean, we could easily accelerate a part of the world in an extraordinary way, leave the rest of the world behind, and I guarantee it, we would not be happy or proud with that result. So we need to make sure that we continue to think globally about how do we make this a really wonderful world. Yeah. Well, you, you told us, uh, I mean, you know, technology might be exponential, but our brain is definitely not. And if we look at uh, the president of your country, uh, then I think, you know, we sometimes regress. I think um, what you see happening there is an example of where people get left behind. And that's very real, and we do have to deal, I think, with that reality and actually think about, well, what are we doing wrong that, it, that creates a split? Mm -hmm. um, and I think we, we are finding ourselves uh, struggling along with many other places. I think things like Brexit and I mean I think those are all examples of of this um, very non-collective movement forward where we're splitting and um, I think it creates challenges for us and I think we'll continue to be even more challenged in the future not less. So these things like Brexit and uh, Donald Trump being elected, I mean, the Singularity was always a very positive uh, force. You know, you say the world is going to be much better. We're going to have unlimited energy, water, uh, life expectancy, etc. But you also see that the institutions and the politics and uh, and the tribism is is uh, is going to set us back. Do you, are you less positive about it after these uh, reality sinks in kind of experiences? Um, I am definitely positive about the future and. You know, I've never met anyone that really wants to go backward 
and get you know the health care we had 20 years ago or um, I think there are pros and cons that come with our advancement but that overall the positive benefits of it greatly outweigh the negative benefits of it but we are able to destroy ourselves with that technology I mean are we able to you know to do that in a decent way we had some experience with nuclear but these kinds of things are way more powerful than nuclear you know I I, I think we're much more resistant to complete self-destruction than people give us credit for. You know, we, our brains have an unbelievable success rate in terms of like survival. We're incredibly good at survival. I mean, you and I, we've never had an ancestor ever that like didn't survive and leave offspring. Not a single error that way, right? And so, um, you know, I think we all sort of want the same thing. Yes, we become very powerful. We we become dangerous. Um, but at the same time, we also become more humane and more empathetic. Um, and I think we just have to be very aware that technology doesn't necessarily help us with that. Well, let's uh, let's go to the more detailed thing. You also, except for uh, you know being part of Singularity University, you're also involved in technology yourself. What are the? You say that you are making an uh, interesting br drone project. What what kind of uh, what can we expect? Yeah. So, you know, the amazing thing about drones is that the rotor on them is brushless, gearless, and electric. So it's just one moving part. So a drone, when a drone flies, there are just four moving parts, which means it's the most reliable, heavier-than-air flying machine that we've ever seen, which is fascinating because they didn't really exist. Quadcopters didn't exist really like 10 years ago in the form that we see them today. And so I think in the future, we will absolutely get things like flying cars. Mm -hmm. um, well, before, I really questioned. I was like, mm, when is this really going to happen? You know, Clearly, everybody can't have a runway in their backyard, but I think, I think now... Um, because the cost of energy is collapsing. And it really is because of things like solar, which is a computer chip. So it also falls under these exponential laws of- It'll be 100 times cheaper, um, you know, like uh, 20, 20 years from now. Yeah, I think quantum computing too. Uh, One qubit, I think is the leading quantum software company in the world. And I think they're demonstrating that the advances that are happening in quantum computing are greatly exceeding what um, certainly I expected. Uh, and in fact, there have been advances that are not yet publicized that are just truly exceptional. And I think the potential uh, that comes with the advances of quantum computing are actually quite hard to comprehend. But I think that too leads us into a future that is very exciting and I think is unquestionably better than our past. And again, the optimist. Now you're doing something practical too. What is your drone project? What, uh, what, what can I expect there? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, just recently uh, there's been some really amazing things. I have to think carefully about uh, what I can sort of like publicly say, but we've definitely done some neat things. Uh, this past week I did get to watch a, uh, a suitcase-sized drone uh, be unfolded and, you know, fly 250 pounds uh, away. And so... You know, a human being uh, can be transported from a drone with out of a suitcase, which can go 100 miles an hour and, and fly a, a reasonable distance. Yeah, and, you know, I would have expected that 20 years from now, mm -hmm. and it's already here. And so, uh, and so, you know, how quickly these things get adopted and how they get used, that's a, probably a different kind of a curve because of safety and regulations and everything else. But, um, but it's there, and I think we, uh, we are fortunate to live in a universe where technology is exponential because we could have lived in one where it wasn't like that. And so what it means is that, you know, the potential of our future is actually quite hard to comprehend because it's doubling in this price performance. We'll try to get our head around it. Thank you very much, David.